I love this scene. I love just the chosen, how it just brings scripture to life. As we've been walking through this series, it's incredible looking at this season. If you haven't watched The Chosen, I would encourage you because it, for me personally, it makes me just want to dive into scripture even more. I always go back and like, did it really say that? Oh, did that really happen? All this kind of stuff. So it's really fun to watch that and see it just come to life and see a little personality in Jesus. You know, you kind of see the jokes and all that. It's kind of great. But if you don't know me, my name's Danny. I'm the, one of the pastors here. I uh, have the honor and privilege of leading our young adult ministry. Um, and it's been a joy. I've been here a little over a year now. So I've been pretty welcomed into the Florida culture. So it's really nice being here. Thank you guys. Um, but also, speaking of young adults, those of you in the room, I know we have a lot in this room, but this Tuesday, if you're wondering where we're going to meet, we will be in this room this Tuesday night. And if you're new here and you're like, whoa, we have a young adult ministry, awesome, welcome. would love for you to be a part of it this Tuesday um, as I give this shameless plug of hanging out and being a part of that ministry. Um, we'll be here this Tuesday. Um, I know some of you in this room may not be fit the age requirement. I would love for you to come, but it's okay. That's what we got going on here. But also, for those of you, I know we have our DI family here as well. Um, we have had different people come out to the building over at DI and just kind of a, assess it and different things are going on there. And we'll keep you posted on just like what that looks like and what the next few weeks will be looking like there. But for the time being, um, we'll be here and just want to kind of keep you up to date with all of that. So we'll keep you posted on that as well. But we are very glad that you are here with us. Now, I know um, with everything going on, I, I have been spending some time with uh, my boys, and my uh, oldest has been getting into Legos. I don't know if you know anything about Legos. You really don't realize you have them until you're trying to walk around the house at night, and then you step, and you're like, oh my goodness, um, let me make sure uh, that uh, I navigate through what is going on here. But with Legos, there's like there's instructions, and I'm seeing just with everyday life, there's directions and instructions, and there's manuals, and there's GPS routes, and all these different things in our life that kind of guide us and help us get to where we want to go, um, build something that is supposed to look like what the picture is on the page. Um, I know that there was a time where me and Ryman, my oldest, were building something, and I let him kind of take over. and just like, yeah, let's see what happens. And then he brings it to me, and he's like, Daddy, it's not what it looks like on the picture. I'm like, well, well we got to follow the instructions. And I think sometimes for us, that's, that's what happens. Like when I try to take up baking, you know, my wife is literally like, why are you, why are you doing this to us? What did we do to you? And I'm like, just let me have some fun. And so I grab everything in, and I have everything on the counter, and we're working through it. And, you know, I'm like, I got this. I'm sure you've been there. You're like, I got this. We can do this. Um, and start putting things together. It's like, how hard is it to make a cake, right? How hard is it to do this? And then you pull it out of the oven, and my wife's like, what have you done? Uh, why, is the fire, or why is the alarm going off? What is happening right here with the smoke detector? It's great. Um, but the thing is with baking as well, it's like if you miss one step, you get a very different creation. It tastes very different. Um, Sometimes it might be too sweet. Sometimes it might taste just like a burnt piece of cardboard. You don't know what it might be. And I think even with instructions when it comes to um, when you're putting furniture together. Me and my wife just moved into a townhome and she ordered some different furniture and to be specific, some Ikea furniture. Um, if you've ever gotten a piece of uh, uh, Ikea furniture, you know what I'm talking about. When you lay it all out and then you get this manual and you're like, I can't even read half of it. I don't know what I'm doing here. Where's the tools? What am I doing here? And putting this together because they give you the joy of not putting it together for you. And so you get to do that. Um, and you try and make sure you keep your cool in front of your kids. It's fun. And so as you're walking through that and as you're going through the manual, if you miss a step, sometimes you're left, why are all these pieces here left over? Or why does it not look like it does on the box? Um, be careful when you sit down on it because not sure what's going to happen. If we're not following instructions, this can happen. And it can even happen with driving. Um, one of the shows that I watch is The Office. I'm not condoning that, but I do enjoy it sometimes. And there's this moment where they're listening to the GPS and they says to turn right and he turns right immediately and he goes into the lake. And sometimes if we're not careful... We'll drive right into the lake if we're not following uh, directions. But when it comes to instructions as well, you can see um, I, I was talking with a friend, and he went skydiving. 
And asking the question, if you didn't listen to your instructor and do every single thing that they asked you to do, what would have happened? Probably would have ended um, tragically. Probably would not have gone the way that you see all the Instagram posts of people hopping out of planes. It would have ended very differently. And as we're talking about instructions and directions, and we see this in life, there are these simple moments, these simple acts that matter. This, these small steps of obedience and instructions that they matter. And we see it all around us with every single thing that we do. And even in these small steps, it can lead to extraordinary outcomes, like a cake that should look better than a burnt piece of cardboard, or a Lego and, uh, putting together should look like a car and not just like a tower that's all colorful. It should look differently, but sometimes in the mundane, sometimes in the step-by-step, step, we can kind of get lost in the process. It may be confusing. Why are we doing this? Why does that have to go there? I don't see this. Why is that Lego yellow? The car is red. I don't understand. It's just this process is going on, and by taking step-by-step, step, you can get to something extraordinary. As we looked at this video, it's, it's a picture of a passage in John 9. And so if you have your Bibles, you can turn to John 9, and we'll be walking through this moment that Jesus takes a simple step of obedience and turns it into an extraordinary moment. And that's what we're talking about today. Ordinary obedience can lead to extraordinary healing. Ordinary obedience can lead to extraordinary healing. So in verse 1, it says this, As he went along, he, Jesus, as Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. So we see in this moment that Jesus has encountered a man that is born blind. Um, the disciples ask him this question, who sinned, him or his parents? Now, I want to pay attention to this first phrase, too, is as he was going, as he was walking, as he was going about, Jesus was not looking for something to do. He was not looking for someone to heal. He was going about his day. And if you read in the chapter before, he was kind of getting uh, pushed out of the city. But you see here as he's going along and he's with his disciples and he's teaching them and being with them, he sees an opportunity to display the works of God. As he says, and the disciples asked him, who sinned, this man or his parents? Jesus turns it and shows, but that's not what it's about. Now, I don't know about you. I've been waiting in line one time, uh, maybe a few times before, and I've seen somebody, you know, order their food and the food not come out as fast as they want. They've been asking, ringing the bell, hey, what's going on? Like, where's my hot dog? Where's, where's this? Where's the condiments? I don't understand why this is taking so long. And they're frustrated. Then they get their hot dog, and they're like, oh, my goodness, it's cold. I can't believe this. This is terrible. And as they leave, I, I saw a seagull just come in and swipe up their hot dog. And I was like, I mean, you deserve that, right? That's what you get. Yeah, I feel like we've had moments like that, as silly as it is, where we've thought, was like, well, you, you got what you deserve, right? But this is what Jesus is showing here. It's like, it's not that. This man didn't go and, you know, smart off to a hot dog stand worker or someone at a restaurant or cut somebody off as they're going um, down the road. Jesus is showing that. It wasn't this man or it wasn't this, his parents. This is here for the, for, for the works of God to be displayed. Now, God didn't make him blind, so, hey, one day I'm going to show the world like what I can do. It's not it either. But he's taking something because of the fall of mankind, because of the brokenness of the world, because of sin has corrupted everything around us, because of what happened back in Genesis. God now has taken a moment from brokenness and turned it into something extraordinary. And we see this in this passage as he takes it on his way, 
completely flips what the disciples thought was happening here and shows them, no, that's not what this is. It's not a punishment, but an opportunity for God's work to be displayed. Let's see in verse 6 what continues to happen. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. So he goes from explaining what's happening here. He's on his way with the disciples, and then he stops and decides, I'm going to heal this man. But instead of just touching his eyes or what he's done before by just placing his hands on somebody or speaking or doing anything like that, he chooses a different, unconventional way of healing. He takes the dirt, the ordinary substance that's in the uh, area that's every day. You walk on the dirt, you see it, you see the dust cloud, all that kind of stuff. And then he takes his spit and he makes this mud and then wipes it on the man's eye. I try and take myself back. I love what uh, this uh, scene in The Chosen does. It kind of allows us to see the human nature of it and put it into perspective of us like maybe sitting there and seeing this happen, how different it is. That this man is now rubbing mud on this guy's eyes and the cool part about this passage that we see is as the mud is being applied, Jesus simply says, go and wash. I love as we read this, we don't see the man no, what? Why, why would I go wash? What are, what are we doing here? Oh my goodness, you used mud? I just got my eyelashes done. Like, what are we doing here? Like, what? He's not arguing with what's going on. He's not arguing with Jesus. He's not telling him, I think I have a better way, or I think I, I've got this. No, he hears the instruction, and he takes the step. And what does he see? That this ordinary obedience leads to extraordinary healing. As he takes a step, as he walks in this moment. I think about it when I'm putting together Ikea furniture. I don't want to take some of the steps because I think I know what I can do. As silly as this illustration is, it goes along with a lot of things in our life. I think I know how to answer this question or I know how to deal with this situation Or I think I can do things on my own, on my own accord, on my own strength. I don't need to spend time with God. I don't need to be with him. I don't need to know what he says. I don't need to read this. It's just taking up time. I got to get what's done or get what I need to get done. But sometimes this simple obedience of what God has called us to do, whether that's sit with him, speak to him, listen to him, can lead to extraordinary healing, even extraordinary transformation. And so as this passage is going, I want to look at these two moments, but I want us also to know, even with like an Ikea manual and Legos and baking and GPS, all that kind of stuff, when we follow God in obedience and we take those steps, it's not always as clear It's not this manual that we can fold out and say, okay, so that's what God wants me to do. I have to take that step and that step. That's where my left foot goes. That's where my right foot goes. Scripture says in Psalm 119, 105, that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We don't have to have all the answers. We don't need to know the end goal. We don't need to know the end result, but we just need to continue to take a step and allow him to guide us. If you held up a lantern in the old days, you'd only be able to see a few steps in front of you. And that's what he's saying here is just take a step. And I think for us today, where we are, no matter what circumstances or situations we may be walking to, walking through, I think Jesus is just asking us to continue to step toward him. Whatever that obedience looks like for you. As simple as it may seem, it's not easy. It's incredibly difficult and it may seem more complex Then it may appear. But again, he's calling us to continue to step toward him. Because sometimes we may have these hesitations to obey. We may have these hesitations, whether that's a fear of failure or rejection, whether you're at work or with your family. Maybe there's these moments that are happening and you don't agree with and you need to speak up. 
What are they going to say? What are they going to do? How are you going to be received? There's this hesitation of, well, God, I don't know if that's what's best. I think I got it. I can handle it. Maybe this uncertainty of the outcome of what may happen. I think this is true for a lot of us right now. Not sure what is going to happen, what's going to be next, or what phone calls will I have to field and different things like that. What does this look like? This hesitation to obey may be a result of some fear of an outcome. Maybe an overwhelming uh, by the magnitude of what God is calling you to be obedient in. You never stepped out in that way. You never walked in that way. You never spoke up in that way. It can be daunting. And there's these moments that cause us to um, hesitate. But obedience can feel scary and daunting. But even though all of this may be true in how we're feeling, it doesn't mean that God doesn't care about our feelings, doesn't care about what we're walking through, doesn't says like, hey, your emotions don't matter. No, scripture says that cast all your cares and your anxieties on him because he cares for you. And as we walk, he's with us. He just wants us to continue to take a step in obedience. And it can seem overwhelming, but I want to look at a couple elements in this passage. We see some ordinary elements. We see the mud and the water, um, and then ultimately we see God's power in this, but I want to look at the mud. So when you look at the mud, you, there's this dirt that is this common thing, ordinary thing around. It's on the ground. It's everywhere. Um, and the, the reason why this mud is so significant is because it shows this, you know, um, how Jesus used the dirt and used his spit. And this reminds us of just how God can use the ordinary, even the messy parts of our life, to bring extraordinary healing and transformation. How he can take a simple moment and make it into an extraordinary event that his um, power and glory can be displayed and revealed. No matter what we're walking through, I think this is all around us of ordinary moments, ordinary decisions, mundane things that we think are just the day-to-day, every single day walking through this that he can use to create extraordinary moments for extraordinary healing. And then we see the water, and the water that he went to, this pool of Siloam that means sent, as Jesus sent him, did the mud, did all of that, and then sent him to be washed, is such a symbolism of being renewed, being uh, 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 cleansed. And how God can do that in our lives every single day and meet us right where we are. I think I love that beginning of the passage where it's as he is going, as he is walking, as he is there, as he's going, he sees this man. Guys, today, even today, where we are, he meets us where we are. He meets us wherever you are, where you're going, what you're doing. He's not this lofty being that's up and looking at what's happening, but he's here with us, walking with us. And then the last one, we see his healing power. So we see the mud, we see um, the water, and these three elements that are kind of used in this process. And ultimately, it's God's healing power, and it came through Jesus. Because the power wasn't in the mud, it wasn't in the water, but it was Jesus' authority. And we see that the man trusted that. Now, the man was blind, couldn't see, could hear. I love how it depicted it, like his friend was speaking to him, and it was almost like this overwhelming, I am now putting a face with your voice. This man, you know, was here, and he felt mud be put on his eyes, and he could have kept that mud there, and he would have felt Jesus, he would have heard Jesus, He would have even spoken to Jesus. He would have been standing there in the presence of Jesus. But what did Jesus ask him to do? Go and be washed. And the man did. Because of his obedience, I believe, he got to experience the healing power of Jesus. He could have stood there and said, I I got to be with Jesus, which is true. But because he took a step of obedience, he actually got to see and experience that healing and transformation that Jesus brings. Because he knows what's best. 
and he has what is best. And that man took that step of obedience. Now, what does this look like for us today? I want to kind of take a minute and kind of close us down. Um, I'm not done fully, okay, so don't get too excited. But just want to close this down with a couple things that will help us. They're very simple. My goal is to try and be as simple as possible for us to just be able to um, be here, be together, and then take this home. So the first thing that we see in this passage for us to take out is ultimately what I've been talking about, is obedience, is to obey. What areas in your life do you need to walk out in obedience? We see this in verse 7. Go, he said. Go, he told him. Wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home. God calls us to simple daily obedience. Sometimes it's as small as a simple forgiveness. Maybe it's as simple um, as helping your neighbor or spending time in prayer. But the thing that I love here as we're talking about obedience is I've seen it with so many of you over the past couple days. I think you immediately felt like God saying, I, I got to go help. I got to go be with people. I got to just go see what's going on. I have some friends of mine that literally showed up to a house and we kind of didn't really have a ton for them and then just started walking down the street just to see who all needed help. Didn't know the people, didn't know what was going on. Just started walking down the street and just like, hey, how can we help? How can we be there? How can we serve? And I love what JJ said. Many people from, um, that are, are receiving help from our GO team were literally like, I'm so far from God. Why would you choose my house to be here? Sometimes that's the obedience that God's calling us into is just to be there. That presence speaks more than you know. And that's an opportunity for us to step in obedience. The next one is just an awareness of, common, of God's common grace. I think sometimes we can lose sight of what's going on around us because we can focus on it so much that's happening um, in our circle. We all are busy. We have a lot going on. We all have to go somewhere, people to see and people to pick up and take home and all these different things going on. We have schedules and then in the midst, you throw in what's happening over the past couple of uh, days. It's like, what in the world? But if we're not careful and we don't look up from the mess and all that's going on in our life, we can miss that in the moment he's placed somebody in right in front of us. Or he's placed a moment right there in front of us. Or the fact that our family is safe. Or your loved ones are safe. They're good. They're here and they're walking and they're talking and you're able to be with them. There's these moments of his common grace that we can see around us. And if we're not careful, we can miss them. Just like he used these ordinary elements to heal this man. We have these ordinary moments that display God's common grace in our life. And then the last one for us is to trust in the power of Jesus. In verse 7, the man at the end, he, he says, or he goes, So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Again, to reiterate that, he didn't argue. Probably didn't really know a ton about this man, as we will read in just a second. He really didn't know where he, this man was going. He didn't know where he was coming from. He literally says, this man you call Jesus. Sounds like a guy who really doesn't know much about Jesus heard this declaration, heard this command from Jesus and went and trusted that what he says is what's going to heal him. I think for us, Jesus has given us the means for us to walk in obedience and to be able to experience his healing power and transformation. But maybe we're sitting there with the mud still in our eyes. The pool is there for us to wash but we've just been sitting here saying, well, we're good. I got this. I can handle it. He's given us an opportunity to experience his healing and transformation. Now, it doesn't make all of our problems and situations and circumstances go away. It may not even necessarily make it just uh, even better. But this is the moment here as we walk in that we get to be with him experience his presence, and we're no longer walking alone. 
Because again, as we read these three things, it's not a formula that you can follow or a manual that you can follow like you are putting together furniture or baking. We don't just obey to get something out of it. We don't obey just so we can get to the end result and finally be like, all right, everything's okay. We can breathe. We obey because one, we love Jesus. Two, we get more of him. and We look more like him. We talk more like him. We think more like him. And we get to be with him. Because he says to his disciples in John 16, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. And what he's talking about is the fact that he came to die a death that, he, that we deserve so that we can be with him for eternity and have that opportunity. I think that's what I love that JJ shared earlier is we don't grieve like the world does because we have this hope. And I want to read this last little bit. I want to look at how this story ends, okay, in verse 8. It says, His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him beg, uh, or him begging uh, asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claim that he was. Others say, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash, so I went and washed, and then I could see. And where is this man, they asked. I don't know, he said. So what happened there at the end? Not only was he healed, but he was transformed. He was almost unrecognizable. His friends and the people that saw him in the courtyard always begging and being there, they literally were like, no, this can't be the same man. And I think this is a beautiful picture as we walk in obedience, as we take these simple, ordinary steps of obedience, it can lead to extraordinary healing, but also extraordinary transformation where we can look completely different. Where the people at our work, the people in our city, the people at home are literally like, who is this man or woman that just walked in my house? This is a different person. This can't be the same person. Because you've allowed the work and the power of Jesus to transform you from the inside out. Scripture says... For us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. How do we renew our minds? We spend time with God. We can renew our minds on things of the world, and it's going to transform us into looking like the world. Or we can renew our minds on things of God, and it'll transform us into thing, to looking like him. So this man was obedient. This small obedience can sometimes lead to courage for big obedience for us. As we close today, we have this hope. You know, we don't grieve like the world does, and we have this hope to hold on to. And, you know, when we step in obedience, it's not to receive something or make things perfect or anything like that, but we get to continue to take a step toward Jesus, this hope that we have in him. And we talk about this hope, and we talk about everything that's happened. He has come, he has died and rose again, but also this hope is the fact that he's going to return. And as J.J. even mentioned here, are you ready for that? Revelation 21 4 uh, says this He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. This is the hope that we hold on to in all circumstances, in all situations. Because if you have a relationship with Jesus, this is true for you. He will wipe every tear from your eye. Pain will be no more. No more death. No more mourning. And he's going to make everything new. There's a quote that I saw on Instagram. A few of you have even re-shared it. But it says this, and I feel like it's very timely as we uh, close today. It says this. Let us see that even in disaster, there is grace still at work. For you know the limits of our hearts. Let our rebuilding be a declaration that a day will come when all things are permanent. When disaster and decay will have no place. 
when dwellings will stand forever, and when no more lives will be disrupted by death, tragedy, reversal, or loss. No matter what you're walking through today, the situations or circumstances, I'm not trying to belittle that. They're real. But as we walk, whether you're in it or you're walking with someone who is, we have this hope, one, that it's not going to be like this forever. Yes, it is painful. Yes, it is hard. It is not easy. No matter what you're walking through. Don't lose sight of the common grace around us pointing to the hope that we have in Jesus. We have it all around us. We get to hold on to that. I have this question for us today. What are these simple steps? What are these small moments that God is asking you to step into? Maybe it's a conversation with someone. Maybe it's something that involves your work, involves your family. Maybe it's scanning the QR code in just a minute and saying, hey, put me to work. Wherever you need me, I'm ready to go. But maybe for some of you here, in an act of obedience, the Lord's telling you, hey, swallow your pride and let the church take care of you. Because I know some of you in this room have lost a lot. And it's hard to ask for help. We have um, an incredible church, incredible people here that want to help and serve and love you well, even the people that are sitting right next to you. So maybe God's asking you to just say, hey, why don't, why don't you lean on someone else for a minute? Been trying to carry it for so long. But there are these moments in our life every single day. What is that moment right now for you that you need to take a step in obedience? Because this is the thing, we're about to sing this song called Same God. We're going to sing it again. Because I want you to know the same God that walked around on the earth and healed this blind man is the same God that's with us today. The same God that's walking with us today. The same God that meets us where we are in any circumstance, any situation, any conversation, whatever it is. It's the same God, the same power. can't forget that. So we all pray with me. Father, we love you. Thank you for who you are and all you do for us. God, help us to continue to take small steps in obedience, small steps towards you, because this ordinary moment that may seem mundane can lead to extraordinary healing and transformation. So God, would you transform us? We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, can we stand?